Now, I really didn't want to have to make another Brooklyn Nets video, but as of late, I've just felt like things are starting to spiral out of control for the Brooklyn Nets. Now, this isn't me saying that the Brooklyn Nets are going to continue to be bad or that they're going to finish the season on a bad note. There are far too many games in the season for me to make any assumption along those lines. I mean, let's be real. How many times have we seen teams overachieve in the regular season and look like flat out beasts to only underachieve in the NBA playoffs and be flat out pretenders? While I do think that the regular season is important, I don't think that the regular season is everything. I really hope when Nets fans see this video, they don't think that I'm hating on their team. While I have a lot of love for the Brooklyn Nets and their big three, they have some problems that they have to figure out. According to A Pooch, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, James Harden, and Joe Harris have played zero games together this season. Imagine having three of the most electrifying scorers in the game on your roster, and you're not even able to watch them hoop together. That has to be absolutely brutal for Brooklyn fans. Do you want to know what's also brutal? Drop into a Sacramento Kings team that lost seven straight before playing you. You want to know what's also brutal? James Harden's performance in that Sacramento Kings game. Calling James Harden's performance brutal might be an understatement. Against the Sacramento Kings, James Harden would go on to score four points. According to Alex Schiffer, James Harden's four points would be the fewest he scored in an NBA game since playing just four scoreless minutes against the Knicks last April, taking us back to when James Harden aggravated his hamstring. I'm trying really hard to contain my emotions right now because I actually went back and watched the full Kings versus Nets game and Harden's performance was flat out disappointing. Now there were a lot of things that went into this performance and I'm going to get into that in just a second. But I mean, four points, James Harden, we're talking about the guy that averaged 36, seven and seven in a season. We're talking about a guy that followed up that 36, seven and seven with 34, seven and seven. I mean, these averages that I'm reading to you guys feel like something out of a video game. In H-Town, James Harden was just a different type of player. And while he's still really good with Brooklyn, sometimes he's only as good as he wants to be. Versus the Sacramento Kings, there are multiple plays where you see James Harden flat out not playing any defense. As a Harden supporter, I really mess with Harden, but like on some of these plays, he doesn't just lose his man. It's like he never wanted his man. And don't get me started on the lazy passes. And look guys, I could go on about this Harden performance for days. Ultimately, I'm going to try to give Harden the benefit of the doubt because the Harden that I saw last night is not the Harden that I've grown to love. Now, before I actually move on from talking about Harden's performance, I wanna add this into the mix. This season, I've seen Nets players be visibly frustrated with the effort that Harden has put forward. Now, if everything going on was just an isolated incident, I would think, hey, no big deal. That's not the case. When it comes to the Brooklyn Nets this season, there has been way too much noise for a team that, to be honest with you guys, just doesn't need it. January 25th, James Harden admitted that he was frustrated. Quote, of course I'm frustrated. We're not healthy. It's a lot of inconsistency for whatever reason. Injuries, health and safety protocols, whatever you want to call it. I think everybody in this organization is frustrated because we're better than what our record is. Not the biggest of deals, right? Harden's human. He admits that he's frustrated. Well, check it out. January 25th, a report drops that says James Harden isn't going to hold back, said a person familiar with Harden. He's going to tell you where he stands. Harden has been vocal to Nets figures and close contacts alike about his frustrations regarding Kyrie Irving's part-time playing status. A recent injury to Kevin Durant has exacerbated the issue, leaving Harden to shoulder the majority of the offensive burden. During Brooklyn's home games, Nets coach Steve Nash's fluid rotations have also disappointed Harden. Sources tell Bleacher Report Nash has favored hot hand closing lineups rather than a fixed crunch time unit. I like Steve Nash a lot as a player. Has he been the best coach for the Brooklyn Nets? I would have to say no. Where's that quote of Kyrie Irving saying, I don't really see us having a head coach. 
when you need it. Guys, I'm not going to lie to you. I kind of feel bad for Steve Nash. Trying to manage all of those personalities cannot be easy. Every season that you don't win a championship is going to be looked at as a failure. And if you win the NBA championship, nobody's going to say, well, Steve Nash out coached that guy. <laughs> The whole situation is kind of funny because I say that, but to be real, was Steve Nash out on the court giving Giannis 50? Guys, I'm joking. Don't take that serious. Coaching matters so much in the NBA, but to be real, I think Steve Nash was put in a great spot, but also a tough spot. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. That doesn't really make sense, but I'm sure you guys understand what I'm trying to say. So Steve Nash would go on to hear about these negative Harden reports, and this is what he had to say. I haven't spoken to him about these things. I'm not sure what to believe. James and I speak all the time. We have a great relationship. I'm not sure about the validity of these comments, to be honest with you. The thing that stood out to me is that Steve Nash said that I'm not sure what to believe. I think Steve Nash should have just struck everything down. And he sort of did, but he sort of left the door open at the same time. I'm just going to say this interesting response. And I'm not sure anybody would be surprised if Harden was frustrated with Steve Nash, including Steve Nash. Harden didn't have anything to do with the Nash hire, to my knowledge. Harden is not Nash's guy. Maybe they do have a great relationship. Maybe this is just a bump in the road. Maybe it's all fabricated by the media. Who knows? This may be an unpopular opinion, but at least in 2022, I feel that overloading your star players with minutes could be a warning sign of a desperate coach or a bad coach. Now, in this situation, we definitely do know that Steve Nash is a desperate coach dealing with a roster that is not close to 100%. I don't even think James Harden is 100%. January 29th, Steve Nash said Harden had been dealing with some discomfort in his hand for a while. Scans revealed that Harden was suffering from a hand strain. There was strong speculation that Harden wouldn't play the 29th versus the Warriors, and guess what? He didn't. Kyrie would go on to drop 32, and the Nets would lose by 4. As I've stated earlier, losing games is natural in the NBA. There are going to be stretches where you look unbeatable, and there are going to be stretches where you feel like you flat out can't win. The Brooklyn Nets can't let dropping 6 straight define their season. Now, with that being said, after the Nets six straight loss, there were some very interesting quotes and things that happened. James Harden would rule out a players only meeting saying that we've done enough talking. Kyrie Irving would say that players are playing playoff adjustment basketball against us. I'm not going to lie. I thought that was a wild thing to say after losing to the Sacramento Kings, but hey, everybody's different. Steve Nash would say that Harden looked tired and he didn't have his legs. If Harden is tired, why not pull him? It's the second night of a back-to-back. -back. He's in his mid-30s. Oh, and by the way, he played 37 minutes the night before. Now, I'm not going to say that Harden playing on a back-to-back -back is the only reason that he had this poor performance, but with Harden's recent injury concerns, I could understand if he's preserving himself for the playoffs. I could understand how those historic usage rates in Houston could start to take a toll on him. I think this whole thing sucks for Brooklyn Nets fans because you guys are trying to focus on a championship, but everything that's going on makes it hard to do so. Nets fans, serious question. NBA fans, serious question. Would you be cool paying Harden $60 million in order to keep him or get him on your NBA franchise? Keep in mind, the salary cap is still a thing. You guys know I've been covering this Harden situation for a while, and while I don't love to jump to conclusions, where there's smoke, there's typically a fire. And guess what? This Harden situation has been absolutely no different. While I think there are serious injury concerns for Harden, some of Harden's mannerisms and recent performances remind me of the whole Houston Rockets debacle. You remember how Harden basically just threw a temper tantrum on his way out of Houston? He basically did exactly what he had to do in order to get traded. This isn't me condoning Harden's actions, but ultimately it is what it is and it ended up working out for Harden, at least at the time. Check out this recent James Harden post-game press conference that I showed you guys in one of my latest videos. I told you guys that something felt off about this press conference and well, it's starting to look like James Harden's time as a Brooklyn Net may be coming to an end. Let me go ahead and play you guys the press conference. Hey James, there's a there's some reports out today that's, that suggest that you might not be happy in Brooklyn or 
with the rotations that are happening. I'm just wondering, A, if you can speak Reporting to who? Uh, All right, then. Um, Bleacher Report. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, instead of speaking to the reports, can you just talk about your experience living in Brooklyn? What do you mean? <laughs> the, the report suggested that you were unhappy. Some of reports. I don't, I don't know about reports. Did you guys hear from me? That's, like, that's why I'm asking. All right, so um, I don't know about the reports. <laughs> do you enjoy New York City? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One thing that I love about James Harden is that he's not exactly the hardest guy to read. When he's frustrated, you can tell that he's frustrated. I have a serious question for you guys. Can anybody blame James Harden for being frustrated? What's going on in Brooklyn right now is clearly not what he signed up for. Winning a championship with the Brooklyn Nets was never going to be easy. There were always going to be bumps along the way, regardless of what anybody said. With James Harden right now, it's clear that winning is absolutely his number one priority. He said it time and time again, and I mean, let's be real, the signs have been obvious. In one of my recent Harden videos, I talked about a potential Harden for Simmons swap. And while some people laughed at the notion, some people saw the vision. The only reason I brought up a potential Harden for Simmons swap is well, because it made sense, but on top of making sense, there was a Shams report to back it. January 24th, Shams reported that the 76ers prefer to wait to pursue James Harden or another superstar in this offseason and want to save Ben Simmons for that potential deal over the current market. I'll say this, Daryl Morey is an absolute madman, but to be real with you guys, he's a madman that normally gets what he wants and he's also a madman that would do anything for somebody like James Harden. Today, The Athletic dropped a report that dropped my jaw. The 76ers are expected to pursue James Harden in coming days, and the Nets are believed to be open to discussing a deal. Sources with knowledge of the situation tell Shams. Guys, the trade deadline is just days away. February 10th. I think this one is going to shape up to be epic. I haven't even made my Portland Trailblazers video yet. Let me know if you guys want that down in the comments below. Imagine James Harden teaming up with Joel Embiid. Imagine Ben Simmons alongside Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. Now remember, when it comes to reports like this, there's going to be a lot of fluff. There's going to be a lot of denial, whether it be from players, management, whoever. Let me know what you guys think of this situation down in the comments below. I'm not going to lie to you guys. If I'm the Brooklyn Nets and I'm competing for a championship, I'm low-key a little scared to trade James Harden to the Philadelphia 76ers with Joel Embiid playing the way that he's been playing. This situation just has so many moving parts that it blows my mind. Clicking the video on the screen right now is a great way to support my channel. I'm Gil Coop bringing you guys the scoop until our next upload.